I, in my heart, I, I felt that the Lord has asked us to speak a little bit about God's blueprint for the church. And his blueprint is often different than what we think. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an opportunity as we jump into the word this morning to look at what does God's word say about how church should operate and about your role and about the role that we play in leading church and facilitating his church growing and developing and stepping into all that God has planned and purposed. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, uh, Jesus makes such a, uh, a statement of intent. Uh, he's talking to Peter and he's, he says, I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will build my church. It's a statement that Jesus makes about what we do here. He is building his church. It's not Pastor Joshua Tara's responsibility to build the church. It's not my responsibility or anybody else's, but Jesus takes upon himself the responsibility and he says, I will build my church. It's a comfort because that responsibility doesn't have to rest on us. Jesus takes that. And in his wisdom, in the wisdom of God, he chooses to build with us, with you, with me. In 1 Corinthians 3, Paul addresses this and he says, verse five, who then is Paul, who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. God gives the increase. He chooses to work through you and through me. Can God do it in a different way? Of course. God can build his church any way he wants, but he chooses to do it through me and through you. <laughs> now to me, God, wow, that's a risk. I mean, I know myself, I, I know some of you. <laughs> you choose to build something so significant as the church through people who, are, who have frailties, who don't have stuff together. It's not the way I would choose. And many people said, thank God, Alan, that you're not God. <laughs> Yet the Bible teaches it's not a risk. It's not foolishness. It's the opposite. It actually says it's the wisdom of God. If we look at Ephesians 3 verse 10, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. I wanna unpack that because this is such a different perspective on the church. The word manifold just means many the many aspects of God's wisdom. There's many aspects to God's wisdom. But this wisdom of God might be made known by the church. Do you see that? If you can put that scripture up again for us because it's important that we, we see it for what it is. The wisdom of God may be known, made known by the church. To who? to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. <laughs> what this is saying is that the angels that are in heaven, when they look down at the church and they see what God is doing in the church, the result of that is, God, your wisdom is so amazing. Your wisdom, God, in choosing 
to build church with human frailty is so amazing. And that challenges me. It challenges my perspective on church. But it's clear. God's wisdom is on display to all of heaven as they see his plan and purpose for the church unfolding. I love the message translation of Ephesians chapter one. I'm gonna read from verse 20, it says this. All of this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from the dead and set him on a throne in deep heaven in charge of running the universe. Everything from galaxies to governments. No name, no power exempt from his rule. And not just for the time being, but for forever. He is in charge of it all. He has the final word on everything. At the center of this, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts by which he fills everything with his presence. (laughs) The church is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. For me, this is super exciting because you and I have a role to play in God's wisdom being on display to all of heaven. What plays out here in Redemption Church is an opportunity for the world and heaven to be able to look and see how awesome is God? Wow, what a challenge. But it's not a weight of responsibility. Why? Because Jesus said, I will build my church. We work with him in this amazing partnership that God has planned and purposed. Not only does he build his church, but he has a plan on how the church should operate. And we see a lot of that plan detailed in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, uh, when Paul writes that letter to the church in Ephesus, he details much of how this plan comes together in the church. We're gonna read a few different passages in this letter. I'm gonna start uh, in Ephesians chapter two and verse eight to 10 because that's where God's plan and purpose for the individual starts. Verse eight says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we walk in them. God's plan for us is a gift. It starts with the gift of salvation. It starts with us getting to a place where we realize, Lord, I don't have my life together. Looking at Jesus on the cross and realizing that he paid the price for my wrongdoing, for your wrongdoing, and accepting that. When we accept the gift of salvation, it goes on to say in that passage that we step into the plans and the purposes that he has. In fact, it says that God is a, we are his workmanship. Think about that for a minute. God took time in making you just the way that you are. He's a master builder. He doesn't make junk. He doesn't make you in the wrong way. He didn't give you something that you were not supposed to have. He made you with the end in mind How do you fit in to this master plan? And so we can be at peace in our hearts knowing that God has made me the way that I'm supposed to be. He is a master builder. We are his workmanship. And not only have we been given everything that we need, but he has plans for how he made you. 
You have been created to walk in the plans that God has for you. To me, it, it's such great grace. Because in this, God has given us the gifts that we need, and then he allows us to use them, and then we are blessed in using the gifts that God gave. It fits together in a beautiful picture. We're gonna pick up in Ephesians chapter four because Ephesians moves from how God created you as the individual to how we fit together. How do all of these individuals here today fit together in a plan on how God is building his church in a way that heaven sits back and goes, wow, that is amazing. So we're gonna pick up in verse 11 of Ephesians chapter four. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love that we may grow up into all things, into him who is the head, Christ." from whom the whole body joined and knit together by which every joint supplies, according to the effective working where every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. This passage of scripture is so rich, but in it God provides the blueprint for how the church is supposed to operate. And as we dive in here, I would like us to encourage us, let's make sure our, our own paradigms don't get in the way of seeing God's word for really what it is. If I could ask you, please, keep up Ephesians 4 and verse 11 and 12 for us. That would, that would help because I need you to be able to see what the word says about God's blueprint for the church. He gave some, verse 11, to be apostles, some prophets, evangelists, and pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. According to God's word, who is supposed to do the ministry? Do you see it up there? For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. What is it not saying? It's not saying that the pastors and the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the teachers are to do the work of ministry. Do you see that, church? It says those fivefold gifts are given to the church. Why? For the equipping of the saints. So often we see that the wrong way around. We see the pastors, the prophets, the evangelists, them doing the ministry and the saints sitting back and watching them. But that was never ever part of God's plan. God's plan is the saints do the work. Why? Why is God's master plan that the body is equipped for the work of ministry? Because the master crafter, when he gave you those gifts, he wants you to use them. He wants you to step in in faith and use what you've been given. When we, as, the, as the, the fivefold ministers, when we do that, we rob you of the opportunity of stepping into a life of purpose, of engaging with the gift that God gave you. Do you remember Zaleka? She was just here. She said one of the reasons she gets up on a Sunday twice a month to come and serve is because there's a fulfillment. That was the word she, she used. I feel fulfilled as I engage the gift of hospitality that God gave me 
and use it to serve others. That's why God desires for us to be able to use the gift that he gave us. He's looking for that fulfillment for every single one of us. But it's more than that. There's more than just fulfillment because we read a scripture just now in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 5. I'm going to go back to that and particularly the last few verses. It's the scripture about Paul and Apollos. Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And listen to this, and each one will receive a reward according to to his own labor. Do you see that? There is a reward that God wants for you as you engage with the gift that he gave you. That reward we know according to other scripture is in heaven. There is an eternal reward that God blesses us with as we use the gift that he gave us. We have such a generous God. Firstly, he creates us in a way that is on purpose. He gives us a gift. Then in the church, he gives us the opportunity to use that gift. And then he rewards us eternally for using the gift that he gave us. How generous is our God. But the truth of the matter is it's not just about what happens in heaven. There are also benefits to us using the gift in the here and the now. Matthew chapter 25 tells a story of a master, Jesus using it as a parable of a master who gives out money towards the people who work for him. And he gives to three different people. Two of them use what was given, the one buries it in the ground and doesn't use it. But I'd like to focus on what does the master say to the two who used the gift that he that they were given. It's recorded in Matthew 25, I think it's verse 23. It says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Do you see it? What is associated with serving is entering into joy. Entering into the joy of the Lord. One of the favorite things I get to do on a Sunday after church is I walk around and I engage with our dream team because one of the things that I get feedback consistently is, how was your Sunday? The best Sunday, Pastor. This happened, that happened. And it's almost like you can start to feel people leave here in a completely different way. Why? They've experienced the joy of connecting with purpose. They've experienced the joy of using the gift that God gave them. Zaleka used the word fulfillment. That's what God seeks. Not just a reward in heaven, which is amazing. Think about it, a reward in heaven, like for eternity. But in the here and the now, God's plan is that you experience the joy of using the gift that he gave us. Does that make sense this morning, church? This is why God designs the church this way. It's not so that we work for him. It's so that we get the benefit of using the gift that he gave us. He's so generous with us. He's got such good thoughts towards us. When we see church from God's perspective, it truly is shifts the way we think about church, the way we engage with church. You see, church is God's idea. He birthed it. He takes upon himself the responsibility to see the church built. Our challenge with church is to see it from his perspective. So often we're challenged with our own perspective of church. (laughs) From a natural perspective, if I look out on the people that are gathered here this morning here in Greenstone, I see a gathering of people, many of you whom I know, 
I know the flaws I have. I know some of the flaws that some of you have. And in many ways, we second guess what we do and why we do what we do. But that's all a natural perspective on church. We're called this year to look again. Am I right? That's our theme for the year. And I want to challenge us this morning, church, to look at church again. Let's not look at it from a natural perspective. Let's not look at it from maybe a past experience that wasn't so good. Let's look at it from the Word of God, from a heavenly perspective, and see what is God doing in church this morning in our lives. Because as we have the opportunity to look again, it impacts the way we see church. And when we're impacted in a different way, guess what? Faith starts to stir that if that's God's plan for my life, I want a part of it. I want a part of stepping in and stepping into what God's purposed and planned for my life. If that's what church is all about, about finding joy, about finding fulfillment, about an eternal reward, I'll reconsider that. If you're telling me that all of heaven sits back and looks at this gathering of people and their conclusion is, God, you're so wise, I want a part of being in that story. What happens when we get involved? Let's go back to Ephesians 4, the blueprint that we have in God's word. From whom the whole body, verse 16, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. When we all do our bit, the body grows. It grows in love. And when that happens, God's wisdom is on display. The an analogy that Paul uses in writing to the Corinthians is so helpful because he uses the analogy of a body. He says, church is like a body, and this is what he says. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. If the foot should say, well, because I'm not a hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I, I'm not of the body, does that mean it's not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleases. Church, we don't go to church where it pleases me, where it's comfortable for me, where it feels lacquer for me. No, no, no. The Bible is clear. God sets the members, each one of them in the body as he pleases. If God has set you here at Redemption Church, then there's a reason there's a plan. It fits in. You have a role to play. And you have blessing to receive as you step in to God's purpose and God's plan for, his, for, for your life. Only you, only you can play the role that God has set you here to fulfill. I can't play your role. The person sitting next to you can't play your role. Only you can play the role that God has set you in this body to achieve. The Apostle Peter says it this way in 1 Peter 4 verse 8. Above all things have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling, as each one has received a gift. Do you see that? As each one. So if you're sitting here saying, yeah, I think I was at the back of the queue when God was handing out gifts, that's not true. Each one has received a gift. Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold 
the many sides of God's grace. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability with God supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus to whom belong the glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Do you see the same pattern? God is glorified when we take our gift. Everyone received a gift. And when we come together as a body, and use our gift to serve one another, love flows. And when love flows, the body is built up. It's God's plan. God needs our yes. It's so one of the things that I love about Pastor Tara is she's always encouraging us. She's always saying, thank you for saying yes. Because there is an understanding that she has that we, God can have the, the best plan ever. But if we don't say yes, we don't step into that plan. God needs your yes. He needs my yes. He's never going to force us into his plan for our lives. Will you choose this morning to follow the plan that God has for your life? Will you choose this morning to exercise faith to respond to the call that he's placed over you? Will you choose to bring your gift and use it to serve others? Here at Redemption, our role as those that God has called into that fivefold space, pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles, our role, we recognize that our role is not to do the ministry. Our role is to equip saints, to equip you for the ministry that God has planned, for the ministry that he's purposed for your life. And we're committed to that. We're intentional about helping you understand that gift, discover that gift, use that gift. Why? Because we seek the blessing that comes to your life as you step in in faith to answer the call, to use the gift, to recognize that God as a master builder has given you things inside of you that he wants you to use in the building of his church that brings blessing into your life. So if you're here today and you say, Alan, <laughs> I've never seen church like this before, but I'm, I'm excited to step into that. Well, we have some very specific areas that we can partner with you on as you take your next step in your journey here, specifically at Redemption Church. If you've been attending here for a while and you say, I think that this is where God has placed me in the body, like 1 Corinthians 12, 18 says, then we have something specifically designed to confirm that for you. It's called Discover Redemption. It's an evening where we'll share a meal, we'll share our values, we'll share our mission, we'll share our vision with you. And we believe in that moment, God quickens to people's hearts and says, yes, this is where I need to be. And, and if it's not here, some people come to discover redemption and they realize this is not where God's placed me. That's okay. But then you're free to go and find the place where he has placed you and be able to serve and commit there. We believe in the local church, whether it's this one or some other that's not the most important thing. Is the most important thing is where has God placed you in the body? And if you've been attending here for a while and you say, I think this is where it is, then come to Discover Redemption. We have one of those evenings, I think it's the 10th of May. And if you'd like, there's a QR code. You can scan that, whether it's now or whether it's at the end of the service at our info. But actually... Make a commitment to say, this is where God has placed me. That's your first step. There may be people here this morning who said, yes, I've done that. I've already partnered with you. I've already been able to, to say and recognize 
Redemption is where God has placed me. Then we would encourage you to take your next step and discover purpose. In our Discover Purpose course, we will help you to evaluate, through that evaluation that Zuleka went through, we will help you to discover your gifting, your spiritual gifting. We've just read in the Word of God, everyone has been given a gift. We want you to find that gift. We want you to be able to use that gift and step in to what God has planned and purpose for your life. We'll help you at Discover Purpose to be able to make that connection. And you may say to us here today, hey, Alan, I've done those two things. I've already know what my gift is. Well, then our encouragement to you this morning, step in in faith. Step in in faith. Respond to the call of God. Recognize that the master builder has given you those gifts on purpose. And he seeks the reward that comes to you as you step in in faith and follow the blueprint of the church, which is saints equipped for the work of ministry. Your life will never be the same, ever. I've watched that process with hundreds of people. Step in, trust God, understand their gift, use their gift, and it, it, it changes us. It's beautiful, it's special. Uh, we had Zuleka up here. I could get a, any one of those hundred of our dream team up here and they would have the same story. I get up twice a month early. Why? Because there's such fulfillment. There's such joy. As I embrace God's plan for the church, my life is shifted. It changed forever. And we seek the same for you. You may be watching us online this morning and you say, but I'm, I'm online. I don't even live in the same city. Well, Online, there is an opportunity for you to be able to understand what does it mean to get connected to God's purpose. And so if you'd like to be interested in discovering redemption, we can host that online. You just need to let us know you're interested. Drop us an email, info at redemptionchurch.co.za. It'll be in the comments section. Let us know I'm interested in Discover Redemption. And in the same way, if you're interested in Discover Purpose, there is a whole world online where we need your gift to be able to use it in that online space to reach people who may never be able to get into this building here in Greenstone. So if you're watching us online and you'd love to be able to participate, to discover your gift, just drop us that email and we'll be in touch and we'd love to connect you to God's purpose even in the cyber world. God's amazing church. His plan for us is so much bigger than what we could have thought or what we could have imagined. There are 20 different areas where you have an opportunity to serve. And I'm convinced that if you step in and embrace that process, you will find a space where you can thrive, where you can grow, and where you can develop into everything that God has purposed for you. Today is not about pressure. Today is not about a one-off moment. If you need a time to go and study the scriptures, to think about it for yourself, to, to talk to the Lord about it, that's okay. There's no pressure to jump in right now, right here. We have something called a next steps table that's downstairs in our foyer area. When you're ready, go and chat to anybody in that next steps area. They feel called to help you connect to your purpose and destiny in church. And so whether that's today or next week or next month, there's no pressure. There's never any pressure. We just seek the blessing that comes to you as you embrace the fullness of God's plan and God's destiny for your life. So whether it's today or at another time, know that our heart is always to see you develop and embrace the fullness of God's plan for your life. And lastly, you may be here today, you may be watching us online, and your paradigm about God is that He's angry because of the things that we've all done that are wrong. You've heard me say today a number of times, church is not full of perfect people. Church is gathered around a perfect savior 
we are here this morning because we recognize we don't have it all together. We come short, we do things that are wrong, we make mistakes. And in our recognition of our humanness, our frailty, our sinfulness, we recognize that we need a savior. And if you're here or if you're watching us online and you say, I, I want a relationship with God where I know that my sins are forgiven. I know that those things that I've done that are wrong or the mistakes that I've made, I'd love God to be able to forgive me too. Well, the Bible teaches that that was the whole reason Jesus came to earth is he lived a perfect life so that when he hung on a cross, that God saw him as a perfect sacrifice to take away the sin of the whole world. My sin, your sin, every person's sin. And this morning, the first step in stepping into your purpose, the first step in stepping into the plan that God has for your life is to recognize that it is by grace that we're saved. And really what that means is to say, hey, you can't save yourself. It is the gift of God. He gives it to us as a gift. We cannot save ourselves. Stop trying. God never designed us to save ourselves. And this morning, the good news of the gospel is that God saved us. And this morning, that gift is held out to every single one of us. All we have to do is receive it stretch out and receive the gift that he has. And if you're here today or maybe you're watching us online and you wanna respond, you wanna say, yes, I wanna receive that gift of salvation. The Bible says there's two things you need to do. Believe in your heart, speak with your mouth. And as a church, we're gonna lead you in a prayer. If that's you this morning, believe in your heart that Jesus did it for you and pray a prayer with us speaking with your mouth. And the Bible says when you do that, you will be saved. Not maybe, not possibly, you will be saved. So I'm gonna ask our church family to uh, bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray this prayer along with us. If you're praying this for the first time, just pray along with us, believe in your heart, and God's gonna do something absolutely amazing in your life. Say this, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I believe you did it for me. And I want to receive that gift of salvation. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Please come and give me a new start, a new beginning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you've prayed that prayer for the very first time, we just want to say a huge congratulations because the Bible says that something so significant has taken place in your life, that everything that was part of an old life is gone and God gives you a brand new life. It's a little bit difficult to understand right now, but we would love to be able to connect with you, give you some resource. Maybe you'd like someone to pray with you. We have teams in this room or if you're watching us online who'll be able to do that with you. So if you're online, just type in the comment section, I gave my life to Jesus today and one of our team will be able to be reaching out and make sure that you get that resource. If you're in the building this morning and you prayed that prayer with us for the first time, we have a new believers table that is in our foyer and we'd love nothing more than to be able to help you understand a little bit more about what has taken place in your life, give you some resources as well, and point you in the right direction so that your relationship with Jesus can really begin to grow. Congratulations. We're excited that you've made that decision with us here for the first time today. Church, we're going to receive communion this morning. It's something that we do every single Sunday here at Redemption. And the reason that we do is because it helps us to just put into focus the finished work of the cross. If you didn't get one of these little
containers that has uh, a little wafer. It has some juice. Just raise your hand. There's somebody over there on my far right who's looking. Just keep your hand up and we'll get one of those to you. But this is a moment between you and the Lord. It's a moment for us to look again. Life happens. I don't know what's happened this week in your life. But recognize that at this moment, we look again to the cross. We look again to the finished work. We look again and we see exactly what Jesus has done. And so I'd love to encourage us to embrace this moment in faith. You may have had a report from a doctor this week. Look again to the cross. You may be struggling with some symptoms in your body. Look again to the cross. This is a moment for faith to rise in our hearts and for us to be able to say, Lord, we know that your body was broken so that our body may be whole. And as we eat this morning, eat healing to your body. Let's partake. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would do your work and convict us of righteousness this morning. That as we have a revelation that we are righteous, that we'd have the freedom to receive everything that we need. Last week, Pastor Josh said something so significant. He said, faith tells us what we have. Grace tells us why we have it. And this moment, this communion moment, as we are about to drink of his blood, it tells us why we qualify for the blessing of God in our lives. Because he sees us as righteous. He sees us as if we've kept every one of those 632 commandments. Because Jesus kept every one of them on our behalf. And our faith in him gives us the same credit that he has with God. And so as we receive, receive righteousness, receive forgiveness, receive everything that he has given us so that you qualify for every favor that God wants to pour down in your life. Let's receive that together. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that not only in this moment, but in every single moment, you see us as completely righteous. We exercise our faith, Lord, for your righteousness because we know that with that righteousness comes every other blessing. Help us to look again, to see with your eyes that we qualify for every single blessing because we are in Christ Jesus. We're so grateful for that, Lord. We're thankful. And all of God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much for watching today's Word. I know you were blessed greatly and I wanna let you know if you want more resource like this, more sermons like this, they're all available for free on YouTube or on our Redemption Church app. So I wanna encourage you, if it blessed you, share this link with someone else and ensure that you get more of God's goodness and Word in you. We are so excited that Redemption Church has been able to serve you with the good news of Jesus Christ today and look forward to seeing you return for more of God's goodness as we preach the Word of Jesus. Be blessed.